Mercedes have chosen a very interesting detail for this year's testing, revealing a brand new design and philosophy, running a controversial front wing design meant to be an aerodynamic revolution. Yet the timing screens do not light up, raising one question. Could Mercedes be hiding their true performance by not running their car to its fullest potential? Shockingly, Hamilton, Russell and Wolff appears to have exposed the team's antics, revealing the mind games the Silver Arrows are trying to play here. But more importantly, are Mercedes at the brink of discovering something new which could propel the Silver Arrow to be Red Bull's competitors in the 2024 season? The Mercedes W15 has a lot to prove for, and it looks promising already completing over 120 laps per day, confirming excellent reliability. However, it appears that the Silver Arrows aren't ready to reveal their true pace as early as pre-season testing, which has become somewhat of a patter for the Brackley-based squad. Even though both Russell and Hamilton have driven the W15 miles with no porpoising, and with great balance confirmed by Toto Wolff himself, the Austrian was not exactly happy with the pace the W15 exhibited. So, the Mercedes fans were worried that the 2024 season is going to be similar to the 2023 season. Although the three days of testing have not exposed any flaws within the Mercedes car, it was evident that they're not even close to Red Bull, even though Hamilton seemed to have given his maximum of himself to extract the optimum performance of the W15. That can be seen through the numbers, with Hamilton breaking the latest and hitting the throttle the earliest, compared to Verstappen and signs through the corners, which showcases the trust the Brit has in the handling of the W15. Despite this, it was clear that the W15 needed to improve on top speeds, being at least 7 km per hour slower than the Ferrari SF24, which in itself was about 9 km per hour slower than its predecessor. This is when the theory of sandbagging comes to life, but in reality every team works its own plans, has separate goals as it is testing that allow teams to try out different things. While it is all possible that Mercedes could be hiding performance here, as it has done in the past, not running the engine at peak power until it's qualifying for the Bahrain Grand Prix, Mercedes were primarily focused on race pace and maximizing mileage, which should benefit them throughout the season's entirety. Mercedes do have a lot to learn when it comes to the W15's aerodynamic performance, and the fact that Wolf put huge emphasis on the W15's brand new aerodynamic profile compared to its predecessors goes to show that there will be a lot of interesting developments upcoming for the Mercedes machinery. Speaking more about the team's compared pace to rivals, the Austrian made a cautious comment. He said that the balance of the car is much better and the drivers have much more confidence on the car's rear to push around corners. The mood in the camp is positive, he admitted. We had a car in 2023 that was a handful and difficult to understand sometimes why it was doing what it was doing. That has been the emphasis for this season, to have a stable platform from which we can actually develop onwards. Let's see if we have that. It's very difficult to say. We had a filming day yesterday and some aero running this morning, so not relevant lap times. But so far, the feedback from the drivers was, yeah, this is something we can work with, so that is encouraging. There's no euphoria as of yet, as Red Bull are clearly at least half up to a second ahead in the competitive game. But why is this such a big deal to us? Well, we know that Mercedes has the habit of sandbagging during pre-season, which is why nobody takes them seriously at this point in time. But never have they ever admitted to be sandbagging and underperforming deliberately, never until this point. It was Russell who spilled the beans, exposing the team's antics of underplaying the W15's performance while mentioning that the 2024 car feels a lot better to drive when compared with its predecessor. Adding to this matter further, Russell went on to say, It was great to drive the W15 for the first time today. From hitting the ground, it felt like we had a good foundation to start with. We completed lots of laps and have plenty of data to go through tonight. We ended the day in a reasonably good spot and we can build from here over the next two days. We will be focusing on maximizing mileage for learning rather than chasing an optimum sweet spot with the car. Overall, the W15 does feel nicer to drive than last year's car. We know that it's not about the feeling, but the speed. Nevertheless, today was about learning and not about chasing performance. 
We focused on ourselves at this test, and it will only be next week where we see where we stack up against others. Now, this definitely changes everything. Mercedes admitting to be holding off performance? It's safe to say that we are yet to see the best of the W15. But this tactic is definitely a double-edged sword for the Brackley outfit. That's cause when you go out to the F1 paddock and publicly admit that you are not performing to the available maximum, that's going to make your rival teams play the cautious game as well. While the sandbagging element would always be around playing with engine modes, teams always play the maximum with aerodynamic performance to gather crucial data points. This apparently could be the case with Mercedes, as the team has been sending prompts to their aerodynamic engineers back at Brackley. With Hamilton and Russell having done lots of race runs, both were confident on admitting that the W15 has taken the team in the right direction. Hamilton was quick on his description about the W15 as he added, We gathered lots of learning about the W15, both in our long running and single lap work. We've clearly made an improvement with this year's car and it's much nicer to drive. Russell, on the other hand, went into more details, commenting about how different the W15 is and how easy the W15 is to drive around on certain sections. Elaborating on the specifics, the younger Brit said, The car last year was really challenging to drive. Lewis and I had no confidence in it. It felt like it was going to bite us every single corner. We can attack the medium and high-speed corners without the rear end snapping out, and we feel like we've made a really good step in terms of the consistency of the car. We can really lean on it better than we've been able to in the past, and this was a huge focus throughout the year. We saw many flaws with the W14, which the team have done a really great job to rectify. Acknowledging the improvements Mercedes has made, the question still remains, has Mercedes done enough to catch up to Red Bull after conceding that Red Bull might be at least a second ahead? This is a very important question to be answered, as the development these cars will undergo during the season's course will effectively be the ones we will be seeing at the 2025 season, so it is super important to develop these cars properly and quickly attain a competitive state. Wolf was realistic with his predictions, optimistic on saying that it would take some time to reach the top again, but it is coming soon. Inventions surrounding the W15, such as the front wing design, shows us that Mercedes has learned a thing or two serving under Red Bull's dominance. The only thing that we can hope for is for the silver arrows to switch gears quickly, get over the competitive lag and start troubling the Austrian camp. So, with all of this in mind, what do you guys think? Are Mercedes really sandbagging, covering up their latest discoveries by underperforming on purpose? Or is the W15 another disappointing creation under the Mercedes reign? We are very much into your thoughts and perspectives in the comments section down below. And on your way down, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get notified of our future uploads to keep yourselves up to date about the 2024 Formula 1 season.